to Your Health, where we explore the latest in health across the country. I'm your host, Erica Cardenas. Summer means swimming, so today we're talking water safety. But before we get started, let's take a look at what's coming up on today's show. Looking to get fit? Why your boss may reward you for dropping those pounds. And if you're afraid of certain medical tests, don't be. Learn what to expect when you head in for a colonoscopy. And bullet coffee. Find out the benefits of fattening up your cup of joe. All that and more on this episode of Your Health. Sometimes we can all use a little encouragement to stay on the fitness track. Let's check out how some companies are encouraging their employees to get healthy. Hi, my name is Larry Hofer. I'm the Region Vice President of Human Resources for Cox Communications. Here at Cox Communications, we see wellness in a very different light than most companies. We feel that there's different dimensions of wellness. And the four that we're focusing on here at Cox, the first one is the most common, which is physical. The second one is really around emotional. The third dimension is really around financial wellness. And then the last dimension is really around professional wellness. Employees want to stay with a company that they believe they have an opportunity to grow in. Part of it is our, it's our culture. Uh, Cox Communication believes that if we take care of our employee, they will take care of the customer, and if you take care of the customer, everything else follows. So we feel it's important that we take care of our employees um, so if they are healthier, they're going to be more productive. We want them to see that this place is also fun, they can make friends, and they can build a family atmosphere here, right? So when you have these wellness programs, wellness challenges, then people feel like they're just, they're not just coming to work, they're actually coming here to be part of something even bigger than that. Hi, I'm Lisa Weston. I'm the Area Director of Wellbeing and Engagement Consulting with Arthur J. Gallagher. So I've been working with Cox Communications for the last seven years in development of their wellness program. We developed the program, it's called Just for the Health of It. I am integral in the program development, rolling it out, developing communications. I also work with the steering committee and the wellness warriors to take the program and extend it to all employees throughout the Southwest region in Las Vegas as well as throughout all of Arizona. The goals for the wellness program really is to educate as well as provide resources and tools to employees to better themselves and to better their health. We want the program to be highly accessible and easy and fun. And so our goal is really to make it so that employees can see the program, participate as they, they desire, and that the program has something to offer for everyone. Hi, my name is David Dragan. I'm a manager with Cox Communications in Customer Care. I really felt like I needed to start the wellness program, not just for me, for my daughter. Uh, my mom worked all of her life, was in kind of poor health, uh, unfortunately passed before her time. Uh, having my daughter around and seeing kind of those things and just as I was going out playing, getting winded while just simply playing at the park and not really being able to. So I started doing that, feeling better. And I think the first thing that really kicked that off was when she pointed out to me that I was losing weight. She's like, I can, I can almost get my arms around you. And then I had a goal. Having the knowledge that my company has my back and really encourages me through other programs that we put forth, not only in the community, but also in the workplace is hugely successful. So the goal for the wellness program here at Cox Communication is to create a healthy environment where our employees can be highly engaged and be productive. Getting a colonoscopy is something a lot of people are afraid of, but they don't have to be. The experts at Honor Health share what you can expect when getting this life-saving screening. My name is Dr. Deepa Shah and I'm a gastroenterologist who works at Honor Health. So colon cancer is actually quite common. It is actually the second most leading cause of uh, cancer death in the United States. Colon cancer is very preventable, um, you know, colonoscopy is the gold standard test for prevention of colon cancers. All adults at the age of 50 to 75 should have a screening colonoscopy. There are many signs and symptoms of colon cancer. The red flags to look out for would be something like bowel changes, meaning constipation, diarrhea, a change in the caliber of stool, so if they're harder to come out, a pencil shape, blood in the stool, rectal bleeding, unexplained weight loss. I'm Dr. Stuart Treister. I'm a staff gastroenterologist with Honor Health. A colonoscopy, the procedure itself, is about a 20 to 25 minute procedure that 
starts sort of the day before, however. In order for a colonoscopy to be completed successfully, our patients have to be on a liquid diet the day prior and go through a bowel preparation in order to clean their colon so that we can see during the procedure. The day of the procedure, they come in and an IV is placed and our anesthesiologist then gives sedation through the IV to make patients comfortable for the procedure. Then we go in with a long, thin tube that has a camera and a light on the end of it and take a look through the colon to identify any problems and potentially remove things like polyps or take biopsies or things of that nature. And then afterwards, a little bit of recovery time, opportunity to discuss results, and then the patients go home. Many patients may not have a polyp, but if we do have, uh, identify polyps during the procedure, in almost all cases, those polyps are removed at the time of the procedure. Those polyps are then sent to the pathologist to make into slides and look under the microscope to identify what type of tissue they see. The average 50-year-old has roughly a one in three chance of having a precancerous polyp. If left unchecked, any precancerous polyp is potentially capable of turning into a colon cancer in the future, and that is truly how, how colonoscopy saves lives, by removing these polyps before they become colon cancer. You know, the best test is the one that gets done. And, and I think that, you know, there are always self-perceived obstacles like, oh, well, I don't want to burden somebody as a driver, or I don't want to take a day off work. But in the end, it is worth it, especially if it is a preventable cancer. If we can find polyps in the colon, take them out, remove them, and prevent a cancer from happening, we've potentially saved a life, and that's priceless. The American Cancer Society recently changed their recommendations. They now say to get an initial colon screening at the age of 45 instead of 50. The American Cancer Society says colorectal cancers have risen by 51% in people under the age of 50 since 1994. The ACS says that initial test does not have to be a colonoscopy. It can be a home stool test, which you can get from a doctor. However, if you do have a family history of cancer, you may want to get a colonoscopy. Stick around, we have more to come on your health. We'll get some great tips to make sure your family is safe around the water and the secret to making bullet coffee at home. From innovations in medicine to eating better, your health is filled with great ideas to help you live your best life. If you'd like more health stories and information, head to yourview.com. its 20th anniversary and it's the perfect place to learn how to be water safe. Joining me now is founder Bob Hubbard with some terrific advice. Welcome Bob. Good morning. Good how morning. are you? Good morning. Good. How are you? Great. Talk to us a little bit about the Hubbard Swim School. Well, we've been in business, as you said, 20 years. We just love what we do. We have three locations in the valley. We teach children from two months to about 12 years of age. Uh, with their parents under the age of two and a half and then independent in small group classes the rest of the time. Wonderful. Now Bob, what is the perfect age or the ideal age to start teaching a child to learn how to swim? Well, it's a two-edged question. One, we love to get the kids in the water uh, uh, between two months and six months because they get that bilateral motor development, they're in the water, mom and dad or grandma are in there being caregivers and bonding. And then after six months to about three, we start working on every swimming skill from submersions to floating to the whole experience of being able, and you can see it here, three, four, five-year-old children being able to swim the length of a pool and be safe. Right, absolutely, and because it is so important for kids to be exposed to water at an early age, talk to us about the infant program that you have here. 
So we have a parent taught program that starts at two months to six months, no submergence, water experience, but a lot of the children can do things in the water that they can't do on land because they can't support themselves on land, but they can in the water. And then once we move into, the, into a little bit of older six months to two years, you know, honestly, our student is the parent because we want the parent to go home and be able to be in their apartment pool or their condo pool or their backyard safely with their, chi their child. And so research and scientists are telling us that not only when a child takes swim lessons are they safer because they learn the right thing to do around the pool, but actually parents become safer and more knowledgeable about what's right and appropriate around a pool or in the ocean. What is one thing that we need to keep in mind when it comes to staying safe around water? Number one, if you have a pool, secure it. Lock your gate safely. Make sure it's secure, make sure a little guy can't get there. We had an incident of a drowning in Gilbert recently where a little guy pushed a chair against the outside of the fence and climbed over it and got into trouble. So you have to look at all of your surroundings if you have a pool at home. Number two, I would say, is what we call pick a water watcher. When everybody's watching, nobody's watching. So if you're in a backyard environment or even your neighborhood, your community pool, what we want, pick somebody. Put a whistle on them, put a sign on them, just put a bracelet on them. And all we're looking for is 10 to 15 minutes. But you know when you're that water watcher, you're watching the pool. Because you, those moments where it gets confusing or lost, that's where it gets dangerous. Well, thank you so much, Bob, for your wonderful advice. If you'd like more information on the Hubbard Swim School, just head over to their website. Let's take a look at the importance of blood donations and how Virginia Blood Services is making a difference in people's lives. Virginia Blood Services is a nonprofit providers of blood and blood products to area hospitals throughout the state of Virginia and also part of a network of blood centers across the country. So our main goal is to serve patients in need every single day. Blood donations are important because there are so many different patients out there who need blood for various different reasons and everyone is different. Everyone has a different blood type. Every two seconds someone needs blood. Um, every one in seven people entering a hospital are going to need a blood transfusion. So the need is high. Sponsoring a blood drive is a great way to impact your community. It really shows that you support the people around you. It sets a great example for um, your employees or your organization that you're with that giving back matters. After you contact us, we'll follow up with you to set up the best plan for your blood drive. We'll determine how many people might be interested in donating with your group, and we can bring a blood mobile to your location, or we can set up inside. From there, we handle all of the details. We help you with scheduling the donors, we provide the marketing materials to reach out to the donors, and we really make the process simple. I think that Oftentimes, we're missing a big piece of maybe education. There's a lot of unknown in blood donating. Um, people who haven't donated before are fearful of needles or they don't know how they're going to feel after a donation. But our staff is so wonderful and so comforting that, you know, they come out of it thinking, this was not a big deal. You know, this did not hurt. This was a very easy and simple streamlined process. And that's our goal. We want the donor experience to be the best it can be. It takes less than an hour to donate blood and you're saving up to three lives. The reason why we say you save up to three lives is because your whole blood donation is actually separated into three different components, red blood cells, platelets, and plasma. So there's so many different ways that blood products are utilized every single day. Blood cannot be manufactured. It is something that has to be donated by one human to another. And you have a generational impact on the lives of the people around you. When I was little, my mother needed blood product. I was about seven years old and she was in a traumatic car accident. She required about 129 units of blood. And I know that she wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for volunteer blood donors who selflessly gave their blood to, 
to save someone they didn't even know. Many people around the country will be heading to the lakes this summer to go boating. So remember, wear a life jacket as most boating fatalities occur from drowning. Coming up next in your health, treating substance abuse with a unique approach. And how to boost your brain with that next cup of joe. Summer means water activities, and your health reminds you to make sure that everyone in your family knows how to swim. Head to the American Red Cross website and click on the training and certification tab for information on lessons. At Decision Point Center, they view substance abuse as a chronic disease, not a choice. We take a look at their unique approach to addiction. The purpose of Decision Point is really to create a program that does what drug and alcohol treatment should do. We absolutely know that alcoholism and drug addiction don't occur by themselves. Most of the time, what we see is an individual who has experienced trauma, an individual who has a co-occurring mental illness. Some come from really significantly horrific family situations. A lot of healing has to be done. You know, most of the people out there don't understand that the correlation that exists between having been traumatized at some point in your life and developing a substance use addiction or alcoholism is 85% in the research literature. We rarely have a client at Decision Point who doesn't do some element of trauma work. The most effective way to do that is EMDR, eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. It is the Department of Defense treatment of choice for veterans returning home from Iraq and Afghanistan. And we utilize other protocols within the EMDR that actually allow us to disconnect the pleasurable feeling in the brain and the relief of anxiety from the use of the substance. And when that happens, what we observe is wonderful. The brain begins to present the individual with alternative ways to feel good and not be anxious that don't involve substances anymore. I know by continuing to do the right thing, I got people that are willing to show up for me and, and guide me along the way and help me out as much as possible. You know, and it's only through opening my mouth and, and trying to build relationships with people and not being so closed off that led me to the same place over and over again. Whatever you might be thinking, it's, they get you here, man. <laughs> they understand. It saved my life and continues to today. There's a better life out there and sometimes you just need a wake-up call. There's hope after that, you know? Our mission is to give them the tools to maintain sobriety and to be able to launch them into a life that has direction and purpose and to let them know from the very beginning that we have not given up on them and that we never will. One of the best things you can do when it comes to water safety is to learn CPR. Check with your local community centers or the American Heart Association for classes. Next, why adding a little butter or even avocado to your coffee can boost your brain. A healthy life starts with one small change at a time. For advice on making those small life changes, watch Your Health every week to hear from health experts and head to yourview.com for full episodes and health stories. about bullet 
coffee and wondered, what is that? Let's learn about this trend and its brain-boosting benefits. I'm Steve Lewis and I'm the owner of Maverick Coffee. The, the whole theory behind adding it to coffee is so you can break your fast in the morning and get to lunch or dinner and it's kind of the whole idea of being ketogenic, so starving your body so your body starts burning fats versus the sugars that you put in, in during like breakfast, maybe you have a high sugar diet, you're going to kind of burn them sugars first and never burn fats, so you want to burn fats because they burn longer. Um, obviously fats fuel your brain too, so it helps thinking and being more clear and your clarity through the day. So I think there's a, there's a bunch of things happening around the body. It's pretty like a complex system that a good cup of coffee with caffeine, obviously helping to raise your metabolism and your focus with some healthy fats to kind of break your fast. Yeah, so we use clarified butter, which is ghee. So you can find that in most supermarkets like Sprouts or Whole Foods. Um, that's just clarified butter, so they take the lactose off it. Um, we also use um, an MCT oil, a medium chain triglyceride oil, which is a really common brand that you can find, but you can also find that in Sprouts and Whole Foods too. Yeah, it's definitely something you have to do for a longer period of time, like doing it two times in a row, you're not going to really feel any difference. And it does really work, it really helps with hunger and cravings and things like that. We want to thank Bob Hubbard and his team here at the Hubbard Swim School for all their help today. But before we go, here are a few more water safety tips you might not have thought of. After you give your kiddos their bath, be sure to drain the water. It may be tempting to get them ready first, but that water can pose a danger. Also, be sure to empty buckets after mopping floors or cleaning the car. Toddlers tend to be top-heavy and can fall into a bucket easily and not be able to get back out. Even an inch of water can be deadly. Finally, keep your toilet lids closed. Any kind of water can make a kid curious and lead to danger. Thank you for joining us on Your Help. I'm Erica Cardenas. See you next time.